Hi, internet. How are you? I went and got my hair did. Look at that. Neat, isn't it? Now I don't have to sweat from the scalp first anymore. Horrible. Hate long hair in the heat. It's nasty. I'd left it rather far too long. To the point where I didn't really want to stream. Bad. Um, right, so today... Um, it's going to be quite a complicated one. Quite a technical one. Um, hey Athena. Hey, that is a cute little emote. Thanks for popping by. Um, as you can see, I've switched things around a little bit. Um, I just angled my camera so that I'm not actually pointed directly at this fucking ridiculously bright window that in real life is just not at all bright. But, you know, we don't have uh, that wide a dynamic range on cameras, unfortunately. So, right, today, today's going to be a pretty complicated one. We're going to need a few pieces of software to download um, and we're going to need to kind of understand roughly what they're doing for us as well. Um, so basically the point of it is... Um, so before we looked at voice meter um, and using that as a mixer, so essentially we're going to do something very similar to using voice meter as a mixer, except we're going to use Reaper as a mixer. Um, you might not have heard of Reaper before, um, but essentially, it is a full, fully functional, incredibly customizable, and absolutely free to try um, digital audio workstation. Um, and quite a lot of the people that I work alongside of nowadays are actually they're they're actually using this. This is becoming their main uh, workstation of choice. Um, is actually getting a pretty large amount of traction within the music industry and within the uh, post-production industry, within the film and TV industry. Um, and a lot of that is because um, it's free to try. So, you know, why wouldn't you download it? Because it's there. You might as well have it. Um, there's a load of free software like this nowadays. And, you know, I always say about how, how, how consistently impressed I am with... Um, the uh, functionality of OBS for much the same reason. Obviously, a lot of these things are supported by donations. So, you know, if you get a good amount of use out of these things, you really should consider donating just a little bit of money um, to the, the people that make the software because it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Something like Reaper is horrendously complicated to build um, and multi million dollar international companies do a worse job of it all the time so the fact that somebody's basically you know built a, a, a company from scratch to build this thing is, is pretty impressive um and yeah it's free to evaluate for pretty much as long as you want uh they they give you some kind of guidelines about when you should pick up a license and how much a license would cost for you and that sort of thing so it's it's worth looking at that stuff especially if you're going to get a lot of use out of this but, so the point of this is that, I mean, like right now, my mic is just coming straight into OBS, easy. You know, it is like, especially with something like Streamlabs OBS, this is like a 10, 15 minute setup. My stream is super simple. Um, very, very easy to do this kind of stuff. Um, but so what we're going to look at is what would happen if we were to add, essentially... An audio workstation mostly for its um, mixing capability in between a microphone or whatever kind of input we want to use coming into our computer um, and then take its output and run that into OBS or also run that into Discord or Skype or whatever it is that we use to communicate um, with the rest of the world through games and anything like that so essentially you can set yourself up with uh, one audio sound one microphone sound one type of processing on your microphone um, and that's what everybody will hear from from that point on whether you're just talking to them in discord or whether it's actually going out live on your stream um, 
So much like voice meter, but the thing with uh, Reaper is that it's a much more standardized way of working. It's much more familiar to anybody who's had any run-ins with audio engineering or self-production when it comes to being an artist or, you know, a producer. Um, it's got audio tracks down the side. It's got a mixer across the bottom. It makes a lot of sense to people that are used to working with those sorts of things. It comes with a vast collection of free audio plugins. Um, that are very useful um, and it just gives you a lot more kind of routing capabilities so it gives you a lot more options of ways to get sound in and out of the software and potentially distribute it across multiple outputs from there um, a little bit more so than we saw in voice meter um, and i'm not going to just use this as an excuse to badmouth voice meter it's very useful for what it does um, but this is intentionally the next step up technically so um, basically let's just let's just have a look at their website because I'm prattling on so uh, if you go to find Reaper you just go to reaper.fm and this is what you'll see this is Reaper that's why we came here um, as you can see there's a multi-track arrangement here with a, a mixer underneath stereo mono tracks it's all relatively standardized you've got effects sections you've got a routing button um, you can send things all over the place multiple outputs from different hardware and that kind of thing um, so that's what we we want to download this um, just hit the download reaper get the latest version for whichever operating system you're in um, we're just going to quickly look at the uh, licensing so essentially commercial license this is if you are a professional producer or engineer and this is going to be your sole piece of software that you use to make money so obviously the idea is that if you're making money out of this software then you can more than likely afford 225 quid to buy it with um, it's more it's worth vastly more than that um, uh, and but you can also get a discounted license which is just for kind of um, if it says here if you're an individual and Reaper is the only for your personal use or you are an individual or a business using Reaper commercially and yearly your gross revenue does not exceed twenty thousand dollars or you're in education essentially or you're part of a non-profit organization um, essentially if you've got any of those things uh, or if those things describe you then you can get the discounted license um, if you are outside of those things like if you earn, earn more than that or if it's not just for your personal use then you should consider buying the commercial license but like I said you can evaluate this software for free forever you just have to wait for a nag screen to get out of the way when you actually open the the, uh, the um, workstation to start with and then you can continue to use it and that is totally possible that's not really a bad thing i consider this type of licensing more like donationware personally uh, you kind of choose whether you want to pay it so um also on top of this what we're going to use is um not voice meter but we are going to use the pretty awesome actually vb cable virtual audio device now this uh, essentially gives you um, an audio device which kind of has one input and one output. Well actually it does have more than that. You can ac access more than that but we're just going to focus on one input, one output and it allows you to route the output of one application into the input of another application. As you might have guessed we're going to use this to route the output of Reaper into the input of OBS. Um, and it's very easy to install you just download it install it won't get in the way it just sits there in your uh, sound settings um, device list and you can access it from either end you can access it from any application from that point on so we need to grab a copy of this and then the other thing we also need is ACO for all now ACO for all Basically, this um, in macOS, which I'm normally using for music work, um, in macOS you can make what's called an aggregate device, where basically you can combine 
multiple different audio devices and then you can access the inputs and the outputs of every single one of them from every single piece of software that accepts an aggregate device as your audio device. Um, <clears throat> ACO for All is actually, um, it's meant to give you an ACO driver for any device that doesn't have an ACO driver. Um, but what it also allows you to do is actually combine multiple ACO drivers or multiple devices into one ACO driver. So what this means is that we can make uh, a new audio device which includes um, our actual audio hardware and the virtual audio cable so that we can access both of those things at the same time. Now I have to say, uh, I'm not sure if this is still in chat, but I have to say a big thank you to Athena. Um, she might not think that she deserves a thank you because basically she uh, contacted me about midday when I just got to my studio um, and she's come into chat before. She's a friend of the community. She's a lovely person. She's a French streamer. Uh, she does a lot of IRL streams where she um, plays piano and sings and has a, a friend of hers play piano and they sing together. Uh, she also plays a lot of games. Um, fantastic streamer, incredibly professional looking stream. Um, I had to look at her OBS earlier and, man, that's, uh, she's got some stuff going on in there. I didn't understand half of it. It's pretty amazing, really. But anyway, she, she contacted me earlier. We'd spoken a bit before about uh, different audio devices that she could use to improve her streaming setup with the piano and the, the microphone at the same time. Um, she took my recommendation, which is great. Uh, she bought herself uh, Focusrite Scarlet 6i6, which is the same as the 2i2, just has more inputs and outputs. But we did have some issues getting it set up. And I think I kind of had a breakthrough just before I had to go out and get my hair did and then come back to do the stream. Um, but so I think hopefully she's going to be able to stick around and work through this all with me um, because there were a couple of hitches and I'm not too sure where they came from but essentially it's because of her question earlier and the fact that it stumped me and I didn't know how to actually fix it that I've actually worked through a lot of issues today which I probably would not have otherwise come up against um, which might seem like an inconvenience, but it's better that I'm actually able to give you guys like a full walkthrough of how to do this rather than just go, hey, yeah, open this, install this, click, 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 done. And, you know, uh, then you, you everybody has their own questions after that. So to try and get things working the way they want it to. Um, so the short version is get ACO for all because essentially this allows you to access multiple um, audio inputs and outputs from multiple audio devices at one time in Windows. Not something I'm kind of used to needing, uh, like I say, because I normally use a macOS system for all my music work, and this kind of thing is just part and parcel of the operating system, which is a wonderful luxury I'm now realizing. So we'll need ACO for all, uh, get whichever language you desire. Um, and install it. It won't actually install a, an application as you're familiar with. Um, it really is, uh, it's a virtual, it's, it's basically a virtual audio device that can access numerous inputs and outputs at once. Um, and you'll see as we go through this setup how you would actually uh, use it. But don't expect there to be an application on your computer called ACO for all. Uh, it doesn't really work like that. It is a device driver. So get Reaper get virtual audio cable because it's brilliant and get ACO for all because you probably will need it. You might not, but it, there's not really any reason to not have it. So grab yourself a copy. It's a good piece of software. Um, so that is what we'll be looking at today. So one thing I want to go through as well. Um, now, this is quite important if you are trying to access numerous audio devices at once. Um, uh, there is a thing in audio that is known as sample rate. Every audio device has a setting for sample rate. Um, almost all the time you will find it here in the advanced tab. You can see that um, my Mark of the Unicorn device, which is what I'll be mostly using today, because um, it has better drivers than my other audio devices for Windows. 
Um, you'll see here that I've got that selected as 44.1 kilohertz or 44,100 hertz if you prefer that. Um, I don't. But so we've either got 44.1 or we've got 48 kilohertz here. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of people think that simply putting this to the highest possible setting will get you the best quality. And there is an argument that does say that the higher the sample rate, the better the audio quality. Um, however, uh, in most consumer pieces of audio equipment, you would not be able to discern the difference between 44.1 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz. So uh, as I typically use 44.1 as my default for recording, I've got all of my audio devices set to 44.1 kilohertz. Um, the exception to that would be if you have a particular audio device that does not allow you to set to 44.1, and is only fixed at 48 kilohertz, and some are. So if you're gonna have to use a device which has only one set in 48 kilohertz, use that. If you wanna just use 48 kilohertz across the board and you can, do so. It won't, it won't affect anything negatively. Um, it's just that most of uh, my recording work is done at 44, so if I was to set all my devices to 48, I'd get horrible, horrible things happening. So um, that's just a word of warning that the first thing you should definitely do is just open up your sound settings, go through all of the devices that you're likely to use. Say, for instance, the cable, the virtual audio cable that we just downloaded and installed. Go to the advanced settings and make sure that you have got 44.1 uh, kilohertz or 48 kilohertz, whichever one setting you decide, your choice entirely. If you want to read up on what this means, go ahead. Um, it's it's good knowledge to have. Um, I can go through it on a future stream if that's the sort of thing people want to know about. Um, but it's essentially, it's, it's like frame rate for audio. Um, if you've got 60 frames per second, that's 60 hertz. That's 60 times a second, your screen refreshes. In audio, essentially, every 44 thousandth of a second, uh, your computer takes a little tiny snapshot of sound, and then it joins them all together, and you hear sound. So that's, that's basically how digital audio works. Um, with the bit depth, which is the first uh, section here, you've got 8-bit, 16-bit, 24-bit. Never, ever use 8-bit you will sound just disastrous, absolutely horrendous. It's normally between 16-bit and 24-bit, but the thing with them is that you can connect one device or piece of software that is set to 16-bit into one that's connected, uh, the one that's uh, set to 24-bit, and there's not going to be a problem. If you do that with sample rate, you'll get um, a lot of glitching, a lot of uh, crackling kind of sounds, and you can potentially sometimes also change the pitch of the sound. Now this actually did happen accidentally on this stream. Um, I was demonstrating different uh, audio plugins and I opened Pro Tools and Pro Tools was just by default set to uh, 40, 48 kilohertz. All my devices were set to 44.1 and apparently I suddenly sounded like I had a very, very, very deep voice, which is fantastic because I hate my voice. Hey Slick, how's it going? Good to see you, buddy. Um, so that's the first port of call. Open, open your sound settings and just go through all your devices uh, and just select. See, the thing is this, this, this one device here, I can't actually change. So it's fixed 24 bit, 44.1 kilohertz. So that's why I've set all mine to that. So all, they all match basically. Um, it will save you a lot of hassle. It will make things hopefully work a lot more seamlessly when you start connecting things together. Um, it should stop errors and kind of glitchy sounds and all that sort of shit. So. First off, what we're going to look at is we're just going to open Reaper. So let's look at this program and uh, I, as always, I'm praying that every single time I open a piece of software, it's not going to completely annihilate my streaming setup. Yep, got a haircut slick, thanks for noticing. Um,
Hello. Okay, we're back. Oh my god. Thank you so much, Athena. Oh, uh, and Slick. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I wasn't muted. That was because I opened Reaper. Okay. Um, that's going to cause us some issues. So what I was saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. Set it, yeah. The settings are a nightmare. So what I was saying is basically I'm just using Reaper as like a demonstration and because it's free to evaluate. Um, I noticed when uh, I was setting up with Athena earlier that she actually has Ableton Live. She has Pro Tools, um, like a, a cut down version of Pro Tools. And a lot of the time when you buy an audio device like the Focusrite device that she's got, you will often get a bunch of free software. And a lot of it is quite useful. She also had a Cubase version of Cubase, I believe. So what I'm going to show you today is not exclusive to Reaper. I'm going to show you how to use Reaper to do this. But um, yeah, she says she has a lot of things she doesn't know how to use. Uh, the thing is, Athena, it's it's about just finding one piece of software that you actually you you like the look of. It doesn't use too much CPU, um, and you can do the things that you want to do easily in it. And that's really all it comes down to. It. You don't need. If someone tells you that you need Pro Tools. It's bullshit. You don't need Pro Tools. If someone tells you you need Logic and you have to go and buy a Mac, also bullshit. If someone tells you that you need anything, most of the time it's absolute bullshit. The only thing you really need to, to stream with is OBS because it's a complete work of genius. Um, so I'm not too sure how I'm going to get around the issue that we've got now. Um, so I think actually what I'm going to have to do is open open Reaper um, and then very, very, very quickly um, set it up so that it actually communicates with OBS so that you can hear me again. And then um, when you can hear me again, I'll start talking through how we how we get set up there. Um, so yeah, sorry about this, but I am going to have to go a little bit quiet on you just for a couple of minutes. Um, I'll hopefully get this done quickly. Bear with me. So let's change first off. I'm going to change our audio input over to the virtual cable. Um, and then when we open Reaper up, we're going to connect my hardware input to the virtual cable by just using a, a an open channel inside Reaper. So you'll see me do this, but I won't be able to talk to you. If I move my mouth, please just spam in chat that I'm muted and you can't hear me because I'm that kind of idiot. So bear with me. Hello. Okay. That worked. Okay, Athena. Um, yeah, we'll look at that in just two secs. Um, Pathra. What's Pathra? Oh, oh, <laughs> it works. Oh, sorry, I, th <laughs> I thought you meant you'd found some kind of piece of software called Pathra Hype. I was like, wow, that sounds amazing. But it's uh, it's an emote. Um, OK, so right now you can hear me. I'll go through what I have actually got to set up here. So um, fail doing that. Uh, don't worry about it. I do it all the time. Bibble thump, things like that. Um, OK, so this is Reaper. Let me just quickly give you a very, very, very brief overview of Reaper. Remember that this is a, a di digital audio workstation, much like Logic that I've been doing a lot of my streams using in the background when I'm on, on the macOS side of things. Um, it's very, very similar. Well, it aims to be as similar as possible. In fact, you can actually get um, you can even get skins for this. That's a funny thing for audio uh, 
audio equipment and uh, music software is to actually have there's so much um customizability that you can remove um how do we do it now which bit do we drag oh god i'm so shit at everything but essentially you can uh, undock and you can rearrange this whole ui so that you know you can focus mostly on your audio mixer or you can literally completely remove the arrangement if you're not using it that sort of thing um i just literally don't know how to do it because i've never really spent enough time uh looking at it hey like kilo how's it going like kilo that's a that's a cool like oxymoron you've got there um well i suppose it's all relative um but thanks for popping by the stream it's much appreciated i hope you i hope this is of use to you so um okay so the one one thing that we need to look at straight away which is one of the problems that um chatting to athena raised earlier which is um hey miss panacotta how's it going thank you thanks thanks for admiring the hairdo i got it did it's done um so uh, one of the main things you have to have to get set up with initially in Reaper is it's literally the first thing it asks you. When you install it, it'll pop up. Hello. It'll prompt you to select an audio device. This is going to get tricky because I'm going to need to look at that window. I might have to... Uh... Hmm. This is tricky. I think I know a way around it. Um, bear with me. Um, I'm going to have to go mute it again, unfortunately. Hello? Okay, we're back. Good. Right. Yeah, no, that's that's because it's um Hey like Kila, oh you're trying to help Athena too. Uh yeah. <laughs> audio settings are a bit of a nightmare. If you if you're not familiar with the world of audio, it can be an absolute uh well let's just say it, head fuck. Um yeah, when I open that window it mutes me. That's because that is where you set up your audio device. And basically I'm trying to get two different two entirely separate applications using two different formats of audio driver to uh, access the same device. And that's why that's a problem. Um, so I'm just gonna have to go through this setup and we're gonna imagine whenever I'm like, just imagine that this happens, you just have to use your imagination. So, Oh, great. Okay, Athena, that's cool. That's really useful, actually, because the streaming side of this is actually relatively simple with any luck. Um, it's the audio setup side that can be a bit of a nightmare. So this, to start off with, we're going to look at the way that um, the virtual audio cable software that we installed and ACO for All, which is the uh, multiple device audio driver that we installed, how those two things interoperate and how they get our input from our hardware into OBS via Reaper. So the first thing we have to do, and now I can open this window and you can still hear me. Um, so this is what you'll be confronted with when you first open Reaper when you've installed it. So this is the audio device settings and you might be thinking, why the hell do I need this? But essentially this piece of software absolutely has to communicate with a piece of audio hardware otherwise it's essentially functionless um, and the way it does that is by using device drivers so much like when you install your geforce experience and it brings with it uh, a new driver for your uh, graphics card your gpu um, you have to have very similar types of pieces of software device drivers to allow your computer to co uh, communicate with an audio device. Um, the most kind of common, the most long-standing, and in a lot of ways, the most functional format for those um, device drivers is 
ACO or ASIO. Oh, thank you, uh, Light Kilo. Oh, let me just... Uh... I've got a rather pikey way of hearing my notifications at the moment. It's uh, through a pair of headphones next to me on the desk. Um, so you can see that within Windows there are six, at least six different uh, formats for device drivers. So if having to use a device driver wasn't enough of a con confusion, add to that the fact that we've got six different formats for it. That bike, I know, <laughs> it's an exercise bike. I really love that. <laughs> Pikey bikey. Um, uh, so these, some of these are essentially like like with a lot of things in Windows, they are they're basically legacy code. So you can see that WDM kernel streaming came from Windows XP. Oh, kernel streaming is actually a pretty good um, form of device driver, but yeah, it's that old. So let's let's aim not to use it. Um, direct sound, wave out, ASIO, dummy audio. Dummy audio is not strictly speaking a device driver, but it basically just allows you to run software like this without actually having a device attached to it. Um, and then Wasapi, which is something Windows Audio something API. So I'd imagine it's Windows Audio Software API, something like that. Um, and that is 7, 8, 10, and Vista, everybody's favorite Windows. Um, so yeah, you can see that goes back quite a way as well. Um, but so we're going to use ACO or ASIO or ASIO, Audio Software Input Output. I imagine that stands for something like that. Um, because we want to use this ASIO or ACO for all uh, device driver, because again, it allows us to add multiple different audio devices into um, one device driver so that we can access all of their inputs and outputs. Um, otherwise, I'll show you what happens. If we choose Wave Out, um, basically what happens is that doesn't work, as we found out earlier, Athena and I, struggling to get access to the four inputs of her Focusrite device. Um, if you use something like Wave Out or if you use uh, Direct Sound, all of these devices, they do allow you to set a different input to your output because essentially we want to access the hardware input that our microphone is connected to or our microphone directly if we're using the USB mic. But then we want to set our output to our virtual cable. So they actually have to address two different devices. Um, what is Vista? Don't ever find out. It's the worst piece of software that anyone, particularly Microsoft, has ever made. Just let it die. Don't ever go there. Um, so as you can see, what we need to be able to do is when we choose our audio device here, we really want to be able to access more than two input channels. Now, if you don't need to be able to access more than two input channels, you really don't need to do a lot of this. Um, but one of the things uh, that Athena was trying to do, like I was saying, is she performs um, with a piano and a vocal mic. So she needs to be able to access her vocal mic. And ideally, she wants to be able to access the stereo output of her piano at the same time. So she bought this device. I'll quickly show you. Um, Scarlet 6i6, there it is. So it's really, really great, really good value for money device. Um, and it's got these two inputs on the front, which are either line, instrument, or um, microphone. If you plug an XLR microphone into them, you've got gain control. On the back, you've got um, an extra two line inputs. So what she wants to do is run her microphone into here and then her keyboard the outputs of her keyboard, which is stereo, into here. Now we have got a few other weird little uh, monitoring issues that happen with this device for her, but I think we can probably overcome them given enough time. Um, but essentially, this is this, that's what we want to do. We need to access more than two of the inputs of her device. So what we have to do to be able to combine 
multiple inputs of the same device along with virtual audio cable is to use ACO for all. And you'll see when I open it, it allows you to go down a list and check off all of the different audio devices you want to access. Um, but there is one little bug that can cause you to believe that it has not worked at all. And I'll show you how to get around that because it, it had me guessing for quite some time. Um, guessing slash screaming into my hands. Uh, so this is how you do it. So you choose from your device list. You'll most likely, um, like I've got uh, audio, uh, Audient USB audio de device driver here. That's because I plugged in the ID14 before and we set that up together. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've had one too many green teas today. Yeah, the screaming part. Everyone's familiar with that. If you've ever tried to set up a anything less than completely simple audio setup on a computer, you would have screamed into your hands too. So uh, we choose ACO for all because we want to combine a couple of these. And in fact, just for now, I'm just going to use this uh, device driver here just to simplify things and stop my uh, sound cutting out. Um, so we're going to use ACO for all. And then when you, uh, that is why I'm here. I'm, I'm here to stop you screaming into your hands. I'll scream into my hands for you, basically. Um, when we open this, now this is what you actually get with ACO for all. Let me put that on a part of the screen that you can actually see it on. If I do that, then that makes most sense, I think. Uh, I'm just gonna go through a few of these things so that you can kind of get your head around it. It's a little bit tricky. <laughs> yeah, that's often the way. I'm actually reaching that point in my life now where I've been doing it for 18 years and I'm thinking about t taking up something else, maybe martial arts or something. Yeah, of course I'm British, but I'm drinking green tea. This is an English breakfast tea, no milk. It's just nice Chinese green tea. But yeah, I've had a couple and my throat's drying out a little bit. So essentially what we have to do when we first open this up, this is what you'll see. Some weird kind of like uh, slightly trippy negative black and white version of a keyboard going off into the distance, which is very creative. Um, yeah, in it. English, in it. Um, this won't help us a great deal. It, it kind of will in that we can, I mean, we can pick which device driver that we're actually turning into an ACO device driver but what we can't do is add more than one device as soon as you click this big old spanner icon here um, where it says advanced options it suddenly becomes completely useful um, essentially you've now got access to the individual um, the individual inputs of each device. So you'll see on my Motu device a large list of uh, inputs here. Um, and you can turn them on and off as you wish. If there's ones that you just simply won't use, don't bother ticking them. Um, like in Athena's case, she needs to make sure she ticks one and two and three and four. Um, I think actually on her device driver, it doesn't actually separate the inputs, but it does still allow you to access them all. Um, and then here we go, we have our VB Audio Virtual Audio Cable, which is the, the free or donationware application we downloaded a little while ago. And that's what allows us to route one application into another. Um, oh, that's good. That's very good, like Kilo. I'm glad that you um, understand what I'm saying. You're lost already. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> OK, so. OK. So let me think how to put this. Okay, so we've got um, we've got two things. We've got a hardware audio device, and in your case, Athena, that is your Focusrite USB box. In my case, it's a much larger device with a lot more inputs and outputs. Um, one of my things there has a red cross. Don't worry too much about that for now, but that might be why that didn't work earlier. So that's interesting. Which one? Is it the focus right one or is it the virtual audio cables? Um, anyway, so we're, we're, we're trying to tie 
a virtual audio device, which is essentially just a piece of software which acts like an audio device, um, and a hardware audio device together so that we can access the hardware inputs and outputs while also being able to tie these two applications together with a virtual uh, the VB cable. Well, that's interesting because um, that's probably why we fell at the last hurdle when we were setting your system up. Um, and again, it might be because of the sample rate. So please open um, open your sound settings and make sure that when you go down here, both on the recording and the playback system, you open that, go to advanced and make sure that your um, sample rate is set the same across all of your devices. And I think in your case, you do actually need to set it to 48 kilohertz or 40, 48,000 hertz there. Um, and that should, I think, hopefully fix it. Um, so in the case here, we're going to, just for a demonstration purposes, uh, where has the, where has my husband gone? Where has my husband gone? Um, let's just do that, because that will allow us to uh, connect a couple of things together and it will make some sense, I think. Um, actually, no, let's do this and then I can actually plug something into that. Um, Panicot got that one. It's, a, it's an in-joke, I'm afraid, uh, but it's a good one. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we have to do, when we've decided on which devices we want to actually tie together here, um, we need to... No in-jokes allowed. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, we need to close this again. Now, the bug, the thing that will cause you to think nothing's worked. Um, essentially, this this stuff here won't update. Uh, none of these options will change. So you can see that I've got the VB audio point, which is the um, virtual audio cable, and it's got eight channels of interconnectivity within it. But you can't see the other audio device that I added to this list. Now, what you have to do is you have to reselect your audio device. So you have to go off of that, and I'm making sure I can still be heard, I can. And then you go back onto it. And then when you, fuck, when you go back onto it, it should work, but it hasn't. Oh, fuck my life. Um, <laughs> see? Oh, God. Let me try it again. Let me try it with the duet instead. Okay. Um, all right, let's try that. Fucking hell. Let's try. Hey, there we go. I, I'm not stupid. See? I'm honestly not that stupid. So I'm a bit stupid. So then what we do, what this is asking for us to do here, where it says enable inputs, this is asking for us to choose the range of inputs that we want to allow access to Reaper. Um, so the first one that we want access to is the Duet input one, and the last one is the virtual audio cable eight. But we don't have to select that. If we're only going to use one pair or a stereo connection with the virtual audio cable, then we only really need to go to point two because one and two is left and right. We've already established before that stereo is the same as two channel. Um, and then we do the same thing on our output range. Uh, you can see that my duet has got two inputs there, but it's also got four outputs. Immaterial, we're not actually going to use it. it. This is purely for demonstration purposes. I'm going to set this up again in a minute. Um, I'm just going to go through the same thing again, but I'm going to set it up for the audio device that will actually cue this to start working. Um, so we choose the first of our range, be the one, and then the last of our range, which is eight, but in this case, I'm only going to choose two because I only want stereo. Um, and then we go OK. Now, we should see when we make a new audio channel, uh, let's just delete this one and I'll just show you how to actually add a channel in the first place because I rushed through that earlier just to get my mic working. So to add a channel, all you do is in this list here, which currently doesn't look like a list, confusingly, but this is a list. Uh, this is where it will list all of your audio tracks or all of your MIDI tracks. There can be any kind. One of the really interesting things about Reaper is that a single track can be not only a piece of audio, but it can also be a MIDI track with a, an audio instrument running on it, or it can be um, uh, 
an aux input, it can be a bus send, it can be all sorts of things. A channel is a channel and you can do whatever you like with them. So it's quite an interesting way of working, very different to a lot of other pieces of software. And another thing that a lot of people seem to really like because it's it kind of feels a little bit more free and a little bit more open-ended. So what we do is we right click here. Now you can see a um, number of options. Um, we can insert new track, which is what we're going to do, which just means adding a new, one new channel. You can insert multiple tracks. If you were doing like a 24 track multi-track recording and you just wanted to add 24, you wouldn't want to do that individually. So you've got the option to alt, uh, uh, insert multiple at the same time. Insert virtual instrument on new track. And that's essentially when you want to uh, play an, an audio instrument, which could be a sample, it could be uh, a piano, it could be a synthesizer. Anything that your computer can generate the sound of using a piece of software, you can add to a track as well. And then you can play that with what's called a MIDI keyboard or a controller keyboard. Excuse me. Insert track from template. This is just so that if you regularly use a particular kind of track, you can uh, save a, a type of channel or track as a, as a default, like a template default. And then you can open that here. I don't have any. Like I said, I don't make a great deal of use of this software. Um, it's just not because it's not good, but just because I use other software. Um, and then you've got the option to show the master track. And all that does is put uh, a, a horizontal copy of the master track up here if you were wanting to automate it or something similar. Um, so for right now, we just want one instrument well, or one, one input track, um, which is going to play the part of our microphone. It's not actually going to, for now, be our microphone. But when I get all this connected up, it will be. Um, so we're going to insert new track. I'm just going to remove that as well for now. So we're really, this is literally as it would be when you open it. So um, this is our channel. Now on our channel, I kind of wish I could zoom this in a little bit. I don't know if I can. Wait. No, I think that's just, uh, it's just the arrangement. I can't zoom the whole thing. Um, but essentially we're looking, oh shit. Uh, we're looking at this section here. This is our number one channel. If we were to record audio on it, it would appear here across in like a timeline kind of arrangement. Um, this slightly uh, weird looking thing, but this can, I think, be a level meter. I'm not too sure what the true purpose of this line is, but essentially this um, when we click that record arm slash disarm, that basically means that that is the channel that we want to uh, monitor the input for um, and basically become an active channel. Um, so it's like the red light. That's what we want to record onto right there. Um, then you've got uh, going across, this is just a volume control, which would be the same as this volume control here. You can see them both move at the same time. You double click it and it resets to its default position. This is the panner. Again, it re re uh, refers to the panner down on the mixer. They will be the same all the time. And then we've got very typical mixer things, mute, solo, like we saw in um, voice meter the other day. Mute just turns that track off. It means you won't hear it. So if that's red, and you're not hearing something, it's your fault, turn it off. If you hit solo, uh, that essentially mutes all the other channels and allows you to hear just the one channel. So again, if you're um, hearing your voice, but you're not hearing an instrument, again, it's your fault, learn what solo does, turn it off, and you should be able to hear everything again. Um, effects is where you can add audio plugins um, and you can turn them on and off. Overall, you can bypass all of them with one button, which is quite a nice little trick. Phase, leave it alone, unless you're using two microphones on the same source and they sound a bit weird, but you probably won't ever be doing that. This turns on and off um, automation, which again, you're unlikely to use in a streaming capacity because you're not actually going to be playing your arrangement back. But that's essentially so that you can make it so your audio would turn up and down um, programmatically dependent on time. Um, then you've got um, 
information about what type of channel this is and what you're actually going to do. So it's recording an input, which is what we want it to be. As discussed, the input can either be audio or MIDI. It's very open, very interesting way of doing things in this software. This is an important bit, so pay attention. This bit is where you choose where the audio is being captured from. So um, in my case, as again, I'm doing this as a demonstration. I will switch over in a minute, but there will be a point um, where you can't hear me. So I'm doing this for now as a demonstration. I'm going to choose my input one and we're going to pretend that this is my microphone. Um, and this really quite uh, slightly too subtle looking um, icon here is a very, very important one. And this basically means that whatever is coming in, this is record monitoring. So um, whatever sound is coming into this channel at the moment will be heard when you click this. Now it says record monitoring on. So if there was something plugged into the Duet input one, you would suddenly hear that. Up until that point, you'll see the meter move, but you won't actually hear anything. So you have to make sure to turn on record monitoring if you want to hear the live input that you have just selected. Um, yeah, Athena, I know this is, as I said to you earlier, um, this stuff is quite complicated. And particularly in your case, if OBS was to be able to give you independent access to the inputs of an audio device, you wouldn't need to even be thinking about any of this stuff. But as it is, um, I guess the best way to look at it is that with learning this stuff, you are broadening your knowledge of being able to process and understand audio. And in the long term, it should be able to give you um, more tools to continue increasing the, the, the quality of your output in the future. So I guess that's one way to kind of validate the amount of time that you're having to put into learning this stuff. It is a bit of a bind when you first start doing it, but you know. Um, okay, so just so you're aware as well, this is what you need to click on. Hey Fraser, how's it going? If you need to actually uh, go back to your audio, uh, audio device settings, you click on this bit here. This is, a te this is telling you what kind of audio device drive you're using at the moment, uh, the sample rate and the bit depth, the record format or recording file format, how many input and output channels are available, um, how, much, um, how much of a buffer you're applying in samples and how much of a time delay that causes on the input and the output. So it's causing, in this case, uh, in our theoretical case here that we're using to demonstrate, it's, you, it's giving us essentially uh, um, maths 13.6 milliseconds round trip latency. So from, this, from the time that you made a noise to the time that you heard the noise in your headphones, that would take 13.6 milliseconds, which is very, very low. Um, yeah, cast going well. Thanks, Fraser. I've muted myself and continued to talk quite a few times already. So that's always a good sign. Um, but yeah, we're going, it is quite a complicated one this week. So hmm, we're, we're struggling a little bit, but that's kind of to be expected, I think. Um, okay, so that's how we get our input into Reaper. We open a channel. I'm just going to go through it again, step by step, really, really quickly. I'm just going to remove this one. Uh, where's delete? Rem remove tracks. Okay, so we're going to add a track, insert new track. There's our track. I'm going to choose the input here. If it's mono, it will be one of these ones. If it's stereo, then it gives you some options for choosing a stereo pair of inputs. Very handy. But we're just going to use mono. Then you need to record arm so that it knows that this is the channel you want to listen to. And then you need to return, you need to turn on record monitoring, and that will give you an active input. So that's great. That's our active input. Let me just quickly um, let me just quickly plug a lead into my duet. See, ow! I hear my knee on the desk. Hold on. I don't think this is going to work. 
<laughs> I know. I know, that's the, that's the thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's easy. Don't worry, mate. But then, uh, then I struggle horribly. No, that didn't work. No, that's okay. I know why, but it's a long story and a boring one. Um, I'll call that back up and forget I ever tried. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a really... It's, there are a lot of hard concepts to get your head around here. Um, combining audio devices and all this sort of stuff. Um, and again, this is why I'm like, only do this if you actually need to do this. Uh, a, a while ago, you kind of needed to do this if you just wanted to run a compressor on your microphone because you couldn't run a compressor plugin in OBS, but you can now. So for a lot of people, you don't need to do this. It's, it's exactly the same caveat as with voice meter and with using an analog mixer like we looked at in the last stream. If you don't need to mix things, don't use a mixer. It's just pointless. Um, it's very, very complicated. We're audio professionals are professionals for a reason. Like It looks like all we do is slack off all the time and have fun, but actually we do no stuff. A little bit. Um, okay, so we've got... Theoretically, we've got our sound into Reaper, and we'll go through this all one more time in just a few minutes when I actually get my live mic going through. So what we have to do next is we have to connect the output of Reaper through the virtual audio cable and can, and pick that up in OBS. So um, I'll just show you the OBS side very quickly so that we'll have our input arriving at the other end. So I just need to wait for my stream to catch up and make sure that you can see that. You should be able to see that. Um, you can see my mic at the moment is coming directly in. There we go, good boy, you moved out of the way of your face, that's good. Uh, this is where our mic is coming directly in at the moment. Uh, we look at my settings, um, we go to audio. This is, this is the easiest place to go to set up your audio stuff. I know it seems simple, but so we've got 44.1 kilohertz selected as our sample rate because that's the same as all of our other audio devices. Um, we have desktop audio device set to default. So basically that picks up whatever is playing back out of our computer um, in the device that is selected when you just once left click on the speaker icon and you'll get a pull down menu at the top of that little pop up and that's where you choose your device. Um, that's what default means. You can select um, specifically but it's much easier for your desktop just to have default because then everything will send to that same place. And at the moment, I've got Motu, which is Mark of the Unicorn, um, Analog 1 and 2. So that's the first two inputs of my audio device being summed together. Uh, so if I plug two microphones in, they'd both be audi audible at the same time, and I would have no control over that. And this is one of my big problems about OBS at the moment, is that it doesn't allow you to access individual inputs and outputs. And this is one of the problems that we had with Athena's setup earlier. She couldn't access inputs three and four of her audio device. So that's, uh, she's literally stuck. So that's why she's having to resort to using Reaper. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to add mic uh, auxiliary audio device number two, and we're going to select cable output. And that, so that is the end of our audio cable, our virtual audio cable. So that means we've taken our audio cable and we've got our device here, which is OBS, and we've plugged that into that. So anything that comes into the audio cable, OBS will be able to hear. And we say, okay. Um, you'll see down here, um, obviously you don't need to look at cam. That's just the, uh, it's just the microphone in my webcam, which is off. Um, but you can see mic aux 2 here. This is the return from the virtual audio cable. So then we need to plug something into the other end of the, the audio cable. Um, because otherwise at the moment there's nothing coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really quickly blast through switching over to my actual microphone so that we can demonstrate this properly. Um, Actually, one thing before I do that, I'll just show you how to use Reaper to actually send to the audio cable before I turn my mic off and I can't tell you. So uh, in the mixer here, you see I've expanded. When it 
first comes up, it's like that. As soon as you expand it here, you get these additional options here for routing. So the top one's where you can insert effects, and the bottom one is where you can add track sends. And so you can add multiple track sends to every track um, so that you can actually send over um, um, multiple outputs or um, you can do very complex routing things within this mixer as well. So I'm going to choose a track send and when you click there it gives you outputs for master track because that's what I want. I want everything that comes up into our mixer to end up going out of this output. Um, track channels two because it's stereo. I know this is three. That's because if I do that, it's naughty. So I don't want to do that. Um, we've got a fader, which again is this fader here. It's, it, these are all just other ways to access this because you might not be looking at this. Um, so we add new hardware output. Now the funny thing is we're actually adding a software output, but we have to imagine that the virtual audio cable is actually a piece of audio hardware, which kind of is. Um, and we're going to go down this list and you can see to start off with, we've got a few options for stereo pairs. These are all for my Duet, my Apogee Duet, which probably won't work because the Windows device drivers are dog shit. Um, so what we're actually going to choose is number five, which is virtual cable point one and point two. So it's like we've got two two cables, one for left, one for right, and we're plugging those into the output of Reaper, and we know that on the other end of those cables is OBS, listening for sound. So we choose that, and then you see that the options are there in front of you. Um, again, you've got a panner, and you've got a fader, and automation, all this sort of stuff. Close that, you don't need to look at that anymore. Um, and you can see here that we've got audio hardware output, VB, audio point one and point two, zero dB, that just means that it's set to unity, it's not turning it down, it's not turning it up. While we're here, you can also, you could add um, more hardware outputs if you wanted. Um, sometimes it's, it's a good way to be able to um, Say if you wanted to route something over into OBS, then you use the virtual audio cable. But if you want to actually be able to hear it at the same time, you might also want to route it to the output of your audio device at the same time. So you can add multiple different um, outputs there, which is very, very useful. Um, so now I'm going to switch over. I'm just going to switch the... Um, which should I select? Uh, in your case, for the output, Athena, you need to select... Um, what I've selected, essentially. Um, VB audio point one, point two. Yeah, exactly what I've done there. So I'll just do it one more time. Just delete that. So add new hardware output and you go to VB audio point one slash point two as one output. And then that gives you a stereo connection between Reaper and uh, OBS as long as we somehow get around that little red check mark. I'm not sure what that's all about, but I think it must be a sample rate mismatch. So, pressing on, I'm going to go a bit muted and you won't be able to hear me, but I am just going to switch over my audio devices so that my actual microphone is being rooted in here and not some other audio device with nothing connected to it. So bear with me. I'll try to make it like 30 seconds or less. Oh, I'm still there. That's weird. Probably, probably will go away now.
Hello. I should be back. Um, if someone can let me know, that would be much appreciated. I probably sound a little bit different because I haven't got a compressor running on this channel. Um, anyone can say that you can definitely hear me. That would be very useful. Otherwise, I'm just going to imagine that you can hear me and press on. So, now what we've got is, you can see we've got our input selected. For some reason, and it doesn't matter, I'm using input 2 rather than input 1. I'm just I'm just that guy. I'm that guy that, yeah, cool, awesome. Thank you, Athena. Thanks for letting me know. Um, I'm just that guy that winds up people with fake OCD. So... Um, on my device here, I've got, I'm, I've opened up that you can see they're listed in stereo pairs, but then they've got one and two. So I've got uh, mark, mark of the Unicorn Analog one, two, one, and one, two, two. So that means the one or the two of one or two. And in the case of three and four, three, four, one, three, four, two. It just means that, you know, you're accessing one of the two inputs in that stereo pair. I think that kind of makes sense. I'm not very good at uh, explaining pointless stupidity like that, but that's what you do. Uh, you can see it's much simpler looking in the stereo pairs because you've just got one and two, and you've got three and four. You notice that there's always, also, this is something that uh, a lot of other software never does, which is actually quite useful. Um, it allows you to select a stereo pair that is 2 and 3. Normally you have to do 1 and 2 or 3 and 4. You can't do 2 and 3. So that's quite cool. I'd imagine it allows you to do uh, 4 and 5 as well, which is pretty pretty useful, useful as well. Um, but anyway, that's how you get your input up. And you'll see that if I press this button, you won't hear me anymore. I was muted then. So there we go. That that proves that you have to press that. That also proves that you have to press that as well. So for every channel that you want to be able to send over to OBS, you need to have record arm on and you also need record monitoring on. And then you'll see here, this is my channel. We could have numerous channels. So let's make numerous channels just so that we can see the point of this mixer. Um, these could all be at different volumes. This one could be over there. That one could be in the left ear. That one could be a little bit in your left ear. This one's a little bit in your right ear. Um, and they're all combining into this master channel. So at the moment it looks like this is just duplicate of this, but it's not. This is actually uh, where all of your channels would combine together. Um, and in fact, I can demonstrate this because I actually set something up earlier. So if I choose a stereo input 3 and 4 and I record arm it and I press that and I believe if I if I lean down here on the floor you, you'll hear a noise in a minute. It's a shit sounding piano. Hey, but it proves the point. So you can see now that I'm combining my voice here with shit sounding piano that I played with my foot. And both of these things are going, being combined and then using the virtual audio cable, they're being sent over to OBS. And if I just turn off my preview so you don't get infinite, 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 then you'll see that down here on my meter, You'll see in the meter move when I speak and also when I kick my toy piano on the floor. Um, so that kind of proves the fact that we are actually mixing multiple audio inputs and we're combining them into one output and that output is a virtual audio cable which connects this piece of software up to OBS. So that's the really tedious technical setup bit done. Now we have to think, why did we, why did we put ourselves through this again? I mean, in the case of certain people's setups, it's literally just so that you've got a combination of inputs. You could, in fact, use this to um, 
<clears throat> in, a, in, a, in a bit of a roundabout way, you could actually set this so that you use this one audio mixer to combine the sounds of everything on your stream. It would be a very, very complex thing to do, and it would be slightly pointless because essentially what you've got uh, over here in OBS is a mixer, and that does exactly that for you already. Um, but you could, in, if you really, really wanted to, and you loved Reaper to death, then you could use the um, audio mixer in Reaper. Um, because obviously it's a much more fully functioned and much more flexible uh, audio mixer than um, the one in OBS. Uh, you can access multiple inputs with it. Um, so, you know, it, it does have function just as uh, an audio mixer. So what I'm going to try to do, now bear with me because, like I've said, I'm not uh, I'm not big on Reaper. This is not the uh, piece of software that I tend to use all the time. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hardware output so that I can hear myself. If I choose um, main output 1 and 2 there, then yep, that's showing up on my audio device over the other side of the room. So again, I'm, I'm combining two, two input channels from one audio device, and I'm sending, one, I'm sending the combination of both of them one direction through um, the virtual audio cable, and then I'm also duplicating that same uh, summing, that same mix of different sounds, and I'm sending that to my audio device over here. So if I put my headphones on now, I can hear myself, which is horrible. Um, there is an ever so slight delay on my voice, and that is what we spoke about before, where um, we've got these number of milliseconds here. So I'm actually hearing my voice with six milliseconds of delay on it, which is slightly bizarre. Feels a bit weird. Feels a bit like I'm listening to myself in a David Bowie record or something. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to add a really big, stupid reverb to my voice, and see what that sounds like, if I can do it. So I'm going to add a new track. I'm going to add reverb to it. I have no idea how to use this. Um, maybe it'll work. Um, I'm going to add an input, so a receive. Oh god. It's not what we wanted. Oh. Um, hmm. Let's try sending first. Oh no! That's even worse. Um, how do I do this then? Input. Add new receive. Oh no, that's hmm. I thought I could add a new receive there, and then it would uh, allow me to put some reverb on my voice. Send. So that's oh okay. It's actually it's far easier than I thought it was. Um, let me delete that. So I need to send two, three, and that's that. Um, this is not a reverb though, hold on, it's not being a reverb. Hello? That's a reverb. Hello? Hello? Wow, that's mad sounding reverb. Okay. Wow, this is crazy. I'm in a big hole. Cool. Uh, I've suddenly got a massive delay on my voice. Oh no, I haven't. It's gone away now. Still not able to put your sound into OBS. That's a real shame. Hold on. Um, so, two secs. Let me just... If I finish up with this... 
Um, I'll probably just, to be honest, I'll give you a quick call, Athena. <clears throat> I'll give you a quick call and just try and figure out what the what the problem is with that, because it seems like it's just something weird about the virtual audio cable. Um, in the meantime, could you just do a restart on your computer as well? Because I'm not sure if we restarted since you installed the virtual audio cable. Oops. Um, sorry about that. That's alright, no worries. Um, yeah, welcome to church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. So that's just an example um, of the, the the kind of creative uses that you could use this for, and you can you can control the amount of reverb that's being set up here. Um, so uh, if I had that, then I could turn it up there and have lots of reverb on a particular word. Help! And not on the rest. And you can set up. Um, Cool. See you in a sec, Athena. Um, you could set up a controller to do that for you. Uh, you can either use like a MIDI keyboard to turn on and off things or uh, just like a little MIDI controller of some sort, which you could uh, assign to the send. And if you really want to do that, it's very easy to do it. Um, but I'm not going to get into that right now. So this is essentially why you would use this. Um, if I want to add... Um, a noise gate to my voice now um, much like I would always have I'm just gonna take my headphones off it's horrible um, if I wanted to add a gate I can add a gate so we've got regate um, and so you can see on this control here uh, I think as long as my head isn't in the way um, here's a level meter so this is a pretty good fast response accurate level meter and like I always do when I set up a gate, I'm going to be quiet. So that's where I'm going to set my gate so that all the background noise is gone um, and all of my speech is allowed through. Cool. OK, that's great. I'm going to just turn the hold up a little bit so it's not too aggressive because I don't want to I don't want it to like cut off the end of uh, quieter words and that sort of thing. Um, typically you want a little bit of hysteresis, um, which you probably in this case it's minus nine or minus four. We'll just add a little bit. Um, so this, this means that now our background noise is taken away when we're not speaking. Bonza. Um, next we're going to add a compressor. Um, we can add the Reaper compressor. Let's do that just because we're looking at Reaper. So um, this will allow us to control the volume of our voice. And again, see here we've got, this is actually a very uh, nice portrayal of what we're actually looking at here. So this controls our threshold. And essentially we, we can put it right where we want it um, alongside the, the, the level of our voice. So that we can actually see where it's going to react, which is nice. Oh, thanks for the host, Athena. Thank you. Um, so what have we got? We need to, it's not going to do anything because we don't have a ratio currently set. Um, I would always advise a mid soft knee on, on a voice um, and then probably a, a good decent amount of compression would be like an 8 to 1 ratio. I wouldn't go much above an 8 to 1 ratio on a voice because uh, it can start to sound quite unnatural. These attack times are completely fine. Don't ever add Hey Athena, um, yeah, that's okay, it's fine, don't worry. But thank you anyway, it's very kind of you. Um, Pre-compression, don't, don't add that. That basically adds a delay before the compressor reacts. So it will actually delay the sound of your voice um, and could potentially knock the sync out between your um, video of, the, of your mouth moving and the, uh, the sound of what you make when you move your mouth. Um, and this is just showing you the game reduction applied. So that's showing you the amount of um, control that's being applied to the louder passages of your speech. Um, now, in a lot of compressors, you have a, an output gain or a makeup gain. In this case, you just turn up the uh, wet control. So on my compressor before, this is going to get loud, sorry, but on my compressor that I was running in OBS, I had, oh shit, that's way louder, fuck, sorry. Um, uh, let's just do six, let's keep it sane. That looks, that looks safe-ish. Um, 
So there we go. That will uh, control the volume of our voice, mostly. I'm just going to turn it down a bit more, actually. It seems like quite a good level we're getting through this. Um, so there we go. Now we've got compression and uh, gating added. We can add an EQ if we like. Uh, there's a, and again, EQ comes with um, Reaper. Uh, it has an analyzer, which some people find super useful because it kind of shows you um, the frequency makeup of whatever it is that's coming into the analyzer. So you can, this is obviously my voice. Um, and then you can use each band to shape the tone of your voice. Uh, you've got multiple different types of bands. Again, we've looked at this all before, so I won't go too far into um, what each type of band does and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> but one nice thing about this, which is if you're an audio nerd, you'll like uh, the the um, frequency control actually goes up in semitones. So it's actually quite useful if you are EQing something like a piano and there's one particular note on the piano that's very, very loud versus all the others and you know that it's a middle C, you can literally move one of these bands to um, C4 or if, if it's a different kind of piano, then C3. Um, and then you can literally just turn down that one pitch. Like if you use a super tight bandwidth, you can actually just pull out individual notes. Um, we're not going to do that because we're EQing a voice. Um, so then we've got gating, compression, and EQ. And now the one thing that is super, super useful about this is that you can put a limiter on the master output. So if you're combining, like in the case of Athena, if you're combining a musical instrument and a voice, or, you know, like someone like Anne Munition often plays guitar and sings, she could have the a DI'd output from her guitar if she didn't want to mic it up and she could be combining the two things inside of Reaper but then she can add uh, at the very last second you can add uh, a limiter and that will basically stop um, stop your output level ever going over zero so you can get a nice loud output level without having to worry about um, ever actually distorting the sound on your stream which is really really nice um, so there isn't actually a VST limiter that comes with um, Reaper, but I believe that there is a JavaScript limiter somewhere here. I think I just saw it. Either that or I've gone mad. Master limiter. The controls of a master limiter are quite different to most other things. Um, and it's got also a look ahead, so that will cause an amount of uh, audio delay. So I've just taken that down to three milliseconds. Attack, that's a very slow attack for a limiter. Um, so it, you probably just want to read up on it. If you're going to use a limiter, you want to understand what exactly you are doing. But essentially, this being there would stop our um, output volume ever going over a certain level. And therefore, it would stop our stream di uh, distorting at any time. So it's, it's a good a good thing to be able to put at the last stage of a mixer because if you're combining multiple very loud sounds it's going to combine and add up uh, it is an additive effect when you're using a mixer and you're combining multiple sounds one thing adds on top of the other and eventually you get much much louder and you keep going up until the point where you can't go any further and your your whole system just distorts and it sounds absolutely horrible um, so that would be another reason to use this and the other thing is that now if I um, if I open Discord, um, I'll just go to my Discord so that it's uh, all about me, basically. Um, if I look at my settings inside of Discord, where I've got my uh, voice input setting here, I can choose my virtual audio cable. So now when I say, for instance, if I was, uh, <clears throat> as I always do, playing um, Fortnite with TSM Myth, uh, just because I like to hear his keyboard, um, I would, on his stream, if we were communicating over Discord, on his stream, he would hear the same type of processing on my voice as my stream does. So that means that wherever your voice is being heard, it makes sure that the processing that you're applying inside of Reaper gets across all of those 
um, avenues, sources, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then obviously you choose your output device based on where your headphones are plugged in essentially so that you can still hear everybody. Um, but the, the benefit of uh, using this type of system and these kinds of processing here is that you can now, using this virtual audio cable, you can distribute that across multiple destinations. So whether it's Discord or if you chat on Skype, like if you're mental and you use Skype or if you, you can set the input of your video game to be the cable uh, output. So if we look at uh, my sound device here, um, it's under recording device like every microphone would be. Uh, this cable here, you can see the level popping up on it because we're actually sending something to it down here. Um, if you set that as your default communication device, the next time you're in PUBG collecting the chicken dinners, everybody that hears you in PUBG will hear all of this brilliant audio processing that you've spent hours and hours and hours setting up. So it, it, it literally means that your voice is unified the sound of your voice is unified across every single platform that you ever send out on as long as you use the cable output as the input into that software like i said before you imagine the cable literally just in your head imagine a cable and you you take the cable hey look here's a cable this is virtual audio cable and we take it and we plug that in to our video game we plug it the same cable a duplicate of it into discord and we plug the same cable into obs and then on the other end of the cable we connect that way into reaper like there my tape machine is reaper today uh, we connect into reaper and every single thing that is inside of reaper will go out of whatever we connect that audio cable to, the virtual audio cable. So I can demonstrate if I again open Discord, um, you can see this level here uh, reacting to my voice. But also if I tow my toy piano, you'll be able to see the level there as well. So you could literally play a toy piano into your friend's headphones if you did this, if you wanted to do that. So there we go. I mean, that kind of rounds it up. I feel like I'm I'm just going to... No, it's okay. I just feel like this is quite loud. Let me just turn this down to zero. It felt like I was pushing that level a little bit too hard there. Um, so yeah, to round up, essentially what we've done is we've used three things. We've used Reaper, uh, free to trial, very cheap to buy, and very, very, very useful. Um, a, a proper, fully fledged um, kind of technically standardized audio mixer, um, which is how I define this as being different to voice meter, which is a useful audio me uh, mixer, but a very much less technical and standardized way of doing things. Um, a, literally a whole host of different types of processing. I mean, literally look at this list of plugins. Like these all come with Reaper. So we've literally got synthesizers, um, samplers, surround sound thingies, delays, like echo, 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 echo. Um, all of this stuff comes with it. Um, got a compressor, really good compressor, really good EQ with a an analyzer if that sort of thing makes you happy. Um, I believe there's also actually a noise reduction. I think it's this. I think. Because I know that Halifax had started using one to strip out the noise of his um, air conditioning in the background of his stream. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff that comes with it. An absolute bucket load of stuff. I mean, this is absolutely 100% worth 60 quid. Um, or just use it on the evaluation license to make sure that you actually want it before you plunk down the money. Um, but essentially it's a full um, workstation. So if I want to record myself speaking right now, all I have to do is press record and you can see me getting recorded up there. Um, and like in the case of Athena's setup, if she was combining multiple things, um, let me do it in fact, screw it. There's no point in not. Uh, let's delete that. 
uh, that, that one. Yes, go away forever. Um, so, toe piano. No, it's gone off. So I can uh, record myself alongside the toe piano if I really, really want to, like this. And so in the case of uh, a performer, someone who can actually play something, um, this means that if I was to be streaming this, I could stream it as a stereo mix, as I'm making live in this mixer here. But then actually, after the fact, if I wanted to go back into Reaper and open this up, I could turn down the, the, the toy piano, or I could turn up my voice, or I could add reverb to certain things, or I could, uh, literally I could mix it like a multi-track record, um, because that's what you're making here at the side. When you hit record, it's recording everything in its individual inputs. So it gives you a huge amount of flexibility after the fact, um, which is awesome. So... Um, I genuinely recommend having this piece of um, software. Not that I'm sponsored in any way, um, but I just think that it's a really, really great piece of software for next to nothing slash nothing. Um, and there's not really any reason to not have it. Um, so we've got Reaper. We will learn vaguely, very, very quickly, how to use Reaper. Um, we used ACO for all which is a, a multi-device driver that allows you to access the inputs and outputs of multiple audio devices all in one place, because you need that. Thanks to Athena for highlighting that for me, because otherwise I wouldn't have even gone through this with you. Um, and then we've learned to use virtual audio cable to connect applications together inside of our computer and to send the audio that we are processing in Reaper over to OBS and capture it alongside um, our game, for instance. Uh, because, um, ah, I hate that, hate that. If, you know, if my notifications pop up um, or if I was to be playing a game, that would be popping up on the desktop audio right here. And then I use these faders on this to control the volume relative to my voice or the piano or every other thing that is being processed inside a Reaper. So it just adds a huge amount of functionality, um, but it definitely has a very steep learning curve. Um, and it's just good to be aware of that. You, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with learning. Learning is a good thing. It, it gives you things, you know, it gives you abilities. It's like becoming Superman at a particular subject. So if you put the time into it and you manage to learn some stuff, um, it might feel like a bit of a grind, might feel like you're trudging through kind of all this stuff and you're just like, oh my God, I don't understand this. Take it step by step. Just learn the thing that you're going to use. Um, and then when you sat there with Reaper up in the background and it's doing its thing on your voice and it's making your voice sound great on Discord and everybody else's stream, you know, occasionally you can pop over to it and you can think, oh, I wonder what this does. Maybe I'll look at this. Or, you know, you just take it step by step. No one expects you to learn this stuff all in one go. And myself as a professional, even the even the sole software that I use all the time, which is Logic Pro um, and Pro Tools, both of those pieces of software, I know, well, in my eyes, I know that inside out. But realistically, there's a million functions in both of those pieces of software that I've never touched. Like, I feel like I know it really, really well, and I can teach people how to use it and all the rest of it, but... Realistically, there's so much in those pieces of software that I'll never use. Um, and that's not because I'm a lazy bastard. It's just because you, you only need to know what you need to use. So if you open up something like this and you think, oh, God, what does that button do? What does that button do? What does this button do? Why there are so many buttons? What's this? What's that? Don't look at it like that. Just go through the things that you need to use and that's it. Stop there. Um, then revisit it. You know, take it slowly. Take it piece by piece. Um, or, you know, if you've got a simple streaming setup, just don't use it at all. There's just no reason to. It's a mixer, and like with an, uh, an analog mixer and a uh, voice meter with, that we looked at in our last two streams. If you don't need a mixer, you don't need a mixer, don't use a mixer because they're confusing, complicated things. That's just the nature of the beast. Don't bother doing it. Um, so, anyway, I should probably leave you guys to it. Um, thanks ever so much for everybody hanging out in the chat today. 
been quite a few of you, which is lovely. A few new faces, a new follow, like Kilo. It's lovely having you around. Um, so yeah, uh, that has been Reaper, Virtual Audio Cable, and ACO for All. How to get those things set up to route an input through processing into OBS. Um, thanks to everybody that makes these pieces of software. I mean, I know it seems like a small deal, but these, this, this is hard. Building something like this is hard and they deserve respect and they do deserve money. So if you've got the money or if you're making money, if your stream's generating a decent amount of income and you make a good bit of use of this, um, definitely consider donating to the guy that makes the virtual audio cable and voice meter and consider picking up a, a personal license for Reaper because it's well worth it. It is. I can't describe to you. I mean, um, oh, no, no. It's thank, thank you for coming and joining us. It's been really good. Um, if you imagine that very quickly, just to put this into a tiny little bit of perspective, even if you were to pay the 200 50 260 dollar license for the full production version of this software when i started engineering um if i wanted to buy logic when i was in the first year of college if i wanted it to be able to do what this piece of software here can do at that time logic was sold as a modular piece of software you had to buy each section of it it's like fucking dlc it's like the ea ran a logic for a period of time um you used to have to buy each plugin. You could buy a pack of plugins in individually. Um, if you bought everything that you get in Reaper, when I started engineering, and this is going back 18 years, but uh, if you go back 18 years, if you really want to, if you were to be able to access something like this, uh, Logic back then would have cost me over three and a half thousand pounds just for the software. And I guarantee you the reverb in it was shit compared to that one. And the compressor in it was nowhere near as flexible as this. The EQ didn't have an analyzer. The EQ didn't have as many bands. Honestly, it's, it's, it's so worth $60, $60 and it's more than worth $250. So don't feel bad about giving the guy the money. He does deserve it. Um, but obviously only if you can afford to do it. And that is part and parcel of why this software is so successful, because the guy's fair. And that makes a big difference nowadays. EA. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thanks again for hanging out with me um, and looking through this stuff. Hey, you can actually see the brick wall out of my window for once. It's not just like staring into the headlights of, of a truck. You can actually see that there is a brick wall out there, and I'm not mad for having a window. Um, Right, I'm going to go. Uh, thank you all for your attention. I hope some of this made sense. You might need a bit of a rewatch on certain bits, but um, it's really technical stuff to kind of cram into a stream. So I hope I got there. If you still got questions, please just join my Discord. Link's below the stream. Um, if you want updates on future streams, obviously follow. Um, subscribe if you're crazy and you've got money. Um, but I don't expect that. Um, join the Discord. There's a question and answers channel. That's how me and Athena started chatting today. You know, I'm around. I'm around and I'm more than happy to help people out. If you've got a specific question about streaming, um, give me a shout. I'll try to help you as best I can. Anyway, guys, I'm going to use this fader to do a fade out on my own voice because I can. <laughs>